Hello, welcome again to GearChunks TV and a new video. Today we will add some custom sounds to a Lindrum. You've probably heard of the Lindrum. If not, you've heard it in music. It was all over 80s pop music. This is a drum machine from 1982 and it used uh, sample sounds as source for the drum sounds. Today we are exploring how to change these sounds. Also, you can stay informed about all our videos by subscribing to our channel. Just click the subscribe button below the video and you can hit the bell button to get notifications when there's something new on our channel. Before we start, um, this is uh, how the sounds in the Lindrum work. The sounds are 8-bit digital files sampled from originals like acoustic drums and percussion. In the Lindrum, they are present as EEPROMs. Let me open it and you can see them here. Um, each sound has its own chip. As you can see, uh, some of these chips in my Lindrum are in these special sockets that you can unlock to remove and replace them. The EEPROMs are uh, very uh, small pieces of memory, 4 kilobytes. This is uh, 4096 bytes, a byte being 8 bits. This means the samples can only have a very short length and the brightness is not very high due to the low bit rate. Uh, but this is, of course, the charm of these old school drum sounds. Uh, some of the uh, longer samples that you can see here um, are in uh, multiple EEPROMs. So the, the crash and the ride, they each take eight EEPROMs and they cannot so easily be replaced uh, as you will need to divide the new sound into eight parts, program them separately and install them in the right order. I um, try to find out what the sample frequency is of the Lindrum, but um, I couldn't find a definite answer. In some documentation, it is mentioned that the samples are 24 kilohertz, but the technical specification of the Lindrum says the playback rate is 28 kilohertz to 35. This is uh, variable as uh, some of the sounds have a pitch knob. Uh, all this does is uh, increase or decrease the sample rate to make it sound higher or lower. Um, my Lindrum uh, was modified with uh, uh, pitch knobs for all the sounds, which gives really nice lo-fi effects to the drums. Uh, let me show you how that sounds. We will need some things to be able to make new sounds for the Lindrum. First, we need an EEPROM programmer. EEPROM is an acronym that stands for Erasable Programmable Read-Only Memory. We can write memory onto these uh, chips using a programmer uh, only if uh, they are erased properly. EEPROMs are reusable devices uh, where ROMs are not and you need an uh, UV light uh, to erase the EEPROMs first if you want to reprogram them. I found this uh, cheap Chinese USB connectable programmer some years ago and it still works. And it also came with a small UV eraser with a time clock. Um, it takes normally about 15 minutes to, uh, to erase the EEPROMs. You put them in this little basket and switch it on and then the UV light will erase them. Um, the Lindrum uses um, 4K uh, size chips so we will need uh, 2732 type EEPROMs. In this case, I have a stock of um, 24, uh, 2732A EEPROMs, which my programmer automatically recognizes. So you just uh, insert it here, turn down the lever, and now the software will uh, read it. The Genius 840 has its own uh, software that you can download, it's quite old. So in uh, my case, I uh, created a Windows XP virtual machine on my Mac and loaded the software in there, then connected the USB programmer and assigned it to the virtual machine. Uh, the software then recognizes it and you can load data, check the EEPROMs if it's empty or faulty and program it. 
So let's uh, check how uh, we can convert the sound to be used in the Lindrum. Uh, this is a bit more complex. We need to downgrade existing samples first so they fit on the EPROM. Uh, for that I used uh, Audacity to load the original sample. In this case um, I've chosen an 808 uh, snare drum and I will just open this in Audacity. As you can uh, see it's a stereo sample. Let me play it for you like this. Uh, first I want to um, make it uh, mono so let me Enlarge this uh, and we split the stereo to mono, then we delete the one channel and now we have the sample itself. Um, also uh, I noticed that the sample is uh, 32 bits and we uh, want to use it uh, in a 16-bit format so we can also uh, change that to 16-bit here. Now I uh, leave it at uh, 44 kilohertz um, because as we can see in a moment uh, the, the program that we will load it into will automatically detect the original sample rate. So let's export this file as WAF and we just name it um, 44 uh, mono, save it, and that's it for Audacity. So we click that away. Um, now we need to uh, load it into a uh, uh, conversion program. Um, I'll load my uh, virtual machine and show you what program I use for this. That's this uh, program. It's called uh, Promenade and it was uh, developed to be used with the Oberheim Promo which was an uh, uh, Ipon programmer uh, operated via MIDI de designed in the 80s but uh, that's not connected here of course. This uh, program uh, still works and it can be downloaded from uh, from our website, ElectronGate, uh, which you'll find, uh, you'll find a link to that below. And I will just um, load the sample in here to see how it sounds. Um, let me first drag it into the virtual machine here, and then we open it here, load file, uh, choose WAF file, and Let's see where it is, this one. Yep, and now I can uh, uh, preview it here, as you can see. Uh, once we have done this, we can uh, save it, save file, and we save it as a bin file. So, SD808, I will call it and store it as a bin file. And this, this bin file now is uh, 4K. And um, it's, uh, it's encoded so that the uh, APROM software can uh, read it. So let's start up the software. That's this program and I will load the binary file that I just created in here. Uh, where is it? Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. Here we go. And that's a bin file. And as you can see here, um, it, this represents all the data that uh, forms the audio file. Now I've already uh, put an empty um, EPROM into the programmer. I'll check, check first if it's really empty, like this. And that uh, seems to have worked. And now we can uh, start the programming by press programming. Uh, it will now start to uh, program the sound data onto the EPROM and once it's finished uh, it will do a verification. Let's uh, just uh, wait for that for a minute.
So that's it, it's ready. Um, I will do the, the same thing with uh, some of the uh, other sounds that I've uh, chosen to be uh, put on EEPROMs for the Lindrum and then we'll uh, place them in there and check out how they work. Now that we've uh, programmed all the EEPROMs, we have put them into the Lindrum as you can see here. Uh, let me point them out for you. There you see the first four and then the fifth one is over there. Let's um, close it and um, see how it sounds. Well, thank you for watching. Did you like this video? Then please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to uh, subscribe to our channel if you want to see more. See you next time.